video is for edu- disclaimer this video is for educational purpose no one's rights have been violated intentionally if it benefits you thank us by liking commenting and sharing it and by subscribing the channel class 12 subject gen english book flamingo chapter 3 deep water deep water about the author about the author william orville douglas was born in meaning of the title the author was scared of water he did not know swimming he wanted to overcome this fear but it seemed difficult in the beginning consequently he overcame this fear and was able to swim in deep water of various lakes thus he enjoyed swimming in deep water about the author william orville douglas was born in minnesota usa in 1898 his mother was encouraging him to dream big and thus used to tell him that he would become one day the president of usa unfortunately His father died when Douglas was just 6 years old so he worked at odd jobs to run his family. He later joined a school on scholarship and studied very hard. At college, he studied English and economics. After the graduation, he worked at a firm for 4 years. As he was born to achieve bigger things in life, he left the job and went to Yale Law School for further studies. In 1939, Franklin D. Roosevelt appointed him the Chief Justice of USA. And he became the young 1939, Franklin D. Roosevelt appointed him the Chief Justice of USA, and he became the youngest Chief Justice in the history of USA. He was against the Vietnam War. Unlike other justices, he didn't like to keep mistresses. Nevertheless, he married four women one by one and produced a few kids. He died in 1980 and was interned. His works. Go East, Young Man, Auto. Here is a lesson for my students. When an orphan boy can become chief justice of a country. This is this guy, William Douglas. he was an orphan boy but he became the chief justice of america what's wrong with you you have parents to support you if you have will to do to achieve bigger things in life it's possible his works go east young man autobio the court years 1939 to 1975 nature's justice text notice these words and expressions in the text infer their meaning from the context treacherous deceitful subdued my pride to lower one's self respect to some extent flailed at the surface to strike at the surface of water fishing for landlocked salmon catching a variety of fish named salmon in lakes misadventure a disaster bob to the surface like a cork to float on the surface of water like a cork curtain of life fell ceased to be alive back and forth across the pool to swim side to side in a pool the words are written in red ink it had happened when i was 10 or 11 years old the words are written in red ink have been used in the text so pay close attention and know their meanings in the text it had happened when i was 10 or 11 years old i had decided to learn to swim There was a pool at the YMCA, full form, Young Men's Christian Association. It is actually an NGO in Yakima, 
Yakima is the name of a valley in America, offered exactly the opportunity. The Yakima River was treacherous. Mother continually warned against it, and kept fresh in my mind the details of each drowning in the river. But the YMCA pool was safe. It was only two or three feet deep at the shallow end, and while it was nine feet deep at the other, the drop was gradual. I got a pair of water wings and went to the pool. I hated to walk naked into it was only two or three feet deep at the shallow end, and while it was nine feet deep at the other, the drop was gradual. I got a pair of water wings and went to the pool. I hated to walk naked into it and show my skinny legs. But I subdued my pride and did it. From the beginning, however, I had an aversion, meaning, dislike, to the water when I was in it. This started when I was three or four years old and father took me to the beach in California. He and I stood together in the surf. Meaning, crashing wave, I hung on to him, yet the waves knocked me down and swept over me. I was buried in water. My breath was gone. I was frightened. Father laughed, but there was terror in my heart at the overpowering force of the waves. My introduction to the Y.M.CA Swimming pool revived, meaning, renewed, unpleasant memories and stirred childish fears. But in a little while I gathered confidence. I paddled, meaning, moved in water, with my new water wings, meaning, inflatable armbands, watching the other boys and trying to learn by aping, meaning, copying, them. I did this two or three times on different days and was just beginning to feel at ease in the water when the misadventure happened. I went to the pool when no one else was there. The place was quiet. The water was still, and the tiled bottom, meaning, concrete bottom, was as white and clean as a bathtub. I was timid about going in alone, so I sat on the side of the pool to wait for others. I had not been there long when in came a big bruiser. Meaning, a strong boy, of a boy, probably eighteen years old. He had thick hair on his chest. He was a beautiful physical specimen, with legs and arms that showed rippling muscles. Meaning, fatless muscles, he yelled, meaning, shouted, hi, skinny. How'd you like to be ducked? Meaning, going underwater for some time. With that he picked me up and tossed me into the deep end. I landed in a sitting position, swallowed water, and went at once to the bottom. I was frightened, but not yet frightened out of my wits. Meaning, I was still in my senses, on the way down I planned, when my feet hit the bottom, I would make a big jump. Come to the surface, lie flat on it, and paddle to the edge of the pool. It seemed a long way down. Those nine feet were more like ninety, and before I touched bottom my lungs were ready to burst. But when my feet hit bottom I summoned all my strength and made what I thought was a great spring upwards. I imagined I would bob to the surface like a cork. Instead, I came up slowly. I opened my eyes and saw nothing but water, water that had a dirty yellow tinge, meaning, color, to it. I grew panicky. Meaning, scared, I reached up as if to grab a rope and my hands clutched only at water. I was suffocating. I tried to yell but no sound came out. Then my eyes and nose came out of the water, but not my mouth. I flailed at the surface of the water, swallowed and choked. I tried to bring my legs up, but they hung as dead weights, paralyzed, meaning, motionless, and rigid. A great force was pulling me under. I screamed, but only the water heard me. I had started on the long journey back to the bottom of the pool. 
I struck at the water as I went down, expending my strength as one in a nightmare, meaning, a bad and frightening dream, fights an irresistible force. Meaning, very powerful force, I had lost all my breath. My lungs ached, my head throbbed. I was getting dizzy. Meaning, I felt my head was spinning, but I remembered the strategy, I would spring from the bottom of the pool and come like a cork to the surface. I would lie flat on the water, strike out with my arms, meaning, beating my arms, and thrash with my legs. Then I would get to the edge of the pool and be safe. I went down, down, endlessly. I opened my eyes. Nothing but water with a yellow glow, dark water that one could not see through. And then sheer, stark terror seized me, terror that knows no understanding, terror that knows no control, terror that no one can understand who has not experienced it. I was shrieking underwater. I was paralyzed underwater stiff, rigid with fear. Even the screams in my throat were frozen. Only my heart, and the pounding in my head, said that I was still alive. And then in the midst of the terror came a touch of reason. I must remember to jump when I hit the bottom. At last I felt the tiles under me. My toes reached out as if to grab them. I jumped with everything I had. But the jump made no difference. The water was still around me. I looked for ropes, ladders, water wings. Nothing but water. A mass of yellow water held me. Stark terror took an even deeper hold on me, like a great charge of electricity. I shook and trembled with fright. My arms wouldn't move. My legs wouldn't move. I tried to call for help, to call for mother. Nothing happened. And then, strangely, there was light. I was coming out of the awful yellow water. At least my eyes were. My nose was almost out too. Then I started down a third time. I sucked for air and got water. The yellowish light was going out. Then all effort ceased. I relaxed. Even my legs felt limp, and a blackness swept over my brain. It wiped out fear, it wiped out terror. There was no more panic. It was quiet and peaceful. Nothing to be afraid of. This is nice, to be drowsy, to go to sleep, no need to jump, too tired to jump, it's nice to be carried gently, to float along in space. Tender arms around me, tender arms like mother's, now I must go to sleep. I crossed to oblivion, meaning, became unconscious, and the curtain of life fell. The end of the part one of the lesson. And the curtain of life fell means he died. So in these few paragraphs, we learned that when Douglas was a young boy, he was trying to learn swimming at a pool but a big boy comes and throws Mr. Douglas into water. Since he did not know how to swim he drowned in water. He tried his best to come out of water but he failed. Finally he became unconscious and he felt like he was dead. This was the first part of our chapter titled Deep Water. Now my students, here is homework for you. First question is, what is the misadventure that William Douglas speaks about? Let the robot read it. Q2. Q1. What is the misadventure that William Douglas speaks about? Disclaimer, this video is for educational purpose. No one's rights have been violated intentionally. Homework. Q1. 
What is the misadventure that William Douglas speaks about? Q2. Who is William Douglas?